Hi, my name is Dr. Natalie Candela. I'm a hypnotherapist and a transformation coach. Welcome to my channel. You're about to listen to a recording of one of my regression sessions. Enjoy. I want you to tell me the very first thing that you see or the very first impression that you have as you come to the surface. I'm what? getting forest. It's like morning. A lot of birds. Like the sun is shining through. Is it a good feeling to be there? Yes. Become aware of why you came there. I don't know, I'm just standing there in the forest. There's a lot of birds. I can just hear the birds and feel the sun and like the trees all around, but I don't know what I'm doing there. Is it a calm day yeah. or is it windy? It's a light breeze. Do you get a sense that it feels familiar? Do you come there often or is this an unfamiliar place? It feels familiar. So what I'd like you to do now is look down at your feet and tell me what you're wearing on your feet. Bare feet. Okay. Now become aware of the rest of your body and tell me if you're wearing anything on your body. I'm getting Native American type. Describe it to me. Brown cloth, turquoise beads. Where do you wear the beads? Around my wrists, my neck, hair. Are you holding anything in your hands or carrying anything? No. Are you in a male or a female body? Female. Young or old? Young. About what age? Early 20s. Are you healthy? Yes. And so as you look around, an awareness will begin to dawn on you of why you are there in the woods. I feel like I come here a lot. And do you come there for a particular purpose? Because it's peaceful. Is it this spot or just into the woods? It's just this spot. It's too loud where everybody is. I come there because it's peaceful to get away from everybody. There's like a um, boulder I sit on. And go ahead and sit on that boulder now. And tell me how it feels to sit on that boulder. It's calming. There's a waterfall. Like You can kind of see a waterfall nearby. Do you hear the water? Yeah. And do you go to that waterfall or you just listen to it? I just watch it and listen to it from the boulder. And when you go there to have that peaceful moment to yourself, does it help you center yourself or do you just go there to relax your body? To clear my mind and relax. And how long do you stay there usually? Quite a while. Don't you have work to do with the others? Not really. On the count of three, I'd like you to see yourself standing in front of the place where you live. One, two, and three. And tell me what you see. A hut. What shape is it? Square. What is it made out of? I think clay. It's brown. And there's a window in the front. Like an opening as if it were a window and a door. Well, an opening for a door. So go ahead and enter that hut and tell me what you see inside. I only see a bed. Can you describe the bed? It's not wood. It's something made of sticks. There's cloth on top of it. A brown cloth over the bed. How big is it? It's enough for one person. Okay. So this hut, does it have separate rooms or is it all one space? It's 
It's all one space. And so other than this bed, what else do you notice? Pottery, like bowls and plates made from clay. I don't see anything else. Now become aware of who lives in this hut. I do. I don't think I live with anybody. You. I think it's just me. Go outside of the hut now. You'll see what's around this hut. Tell me what you see there. There's a bunch of people around. There's a lot of chatter. There's a whole bunch of groups of people just all talking to each other. Are they meeting for a particular purpose? No, they're all just talking to each other. Tune in to one of those groups of people and all of a sudden you will begin to hear what they are saying clearer and louder. Let me know what you hear. They're gossiping. And what are they saying? Did you see what she was wearing today? So I'd like you to now focus a little bit more on what you see around you. You can describe to me if there are any other houses around, how big this place is, what the people are wearing. Just fill in the details for me. Yeah, there's other huts around. There's like these long benches with like fireplaces around them. There's a bunch of them. Like a bunch of different fireplace areas with like the benches. Like fire pit? Yeah, like the fire pits. There's other huts around. Maybe 20? They're not like really close together. Do they all look similar? Yes. And so look at the people and become aware of what they are wearing and what they look like. Like me, the brown cloth. The men just have it around on the bottom and the women have the tops and bottoms. Do you see any children? Not right now, but there are children that live there. So do you know what those gossiping people were talking about when they said, did you see what she was wearing? Are there any odd things that people might wear? It's me. I style my clothes differently than everyone else. In what way? I add turquoise to my top. So you attach the beads yeah. to the clothes? Yeah. And I cut the cloth different. Can you explain I think how? I can see how it's different, but I can't explain it. It's okay. So now become aware of why you do your clothing differently. Because I don't feel like the other girls. They all do everything the same. They all dress the same. They style their hair the same. And I don't want to be like them. I feel like I need to be different. Why do you feel that that's important to you? So I can be my own person. Okay. Can you tell me what your hair looks like? It's braided. There's two braids. What color is it? It's black. And what's the texture of it? Thick and straight. And do you put anything in your hair? Yeah, I put beads in the braids. So, on the count of three, I'd like you to see yourself having a meal. How you would normally have a meal. One, two, and three. And tell me what you see. I'm on the floor with the pottery inside my hut. I'm hearing the word squash, but I don't see. And it's in the bowl that you have? Yeah. Is there anybody yeah. else sitting with you? No, it's just me. 
Okay. And how are you eating? In my hands. Do you have anything else other than a squash? Something black, but I don't know what it is. It's not beans. It's something that's really dark black. Is this how you usually eat? Yeah. So I want you to become aware of how the others eat in this village or settlement. Together. They eat together. Outside. Is that where they sit on those benches? Yeah. And how come you're not eating with them? I wasn't invited. Do they have to invite you? They don't have to invite you, but I feel like I have to be invited. Why is that? Because I don't want to be rejected. Be I don't rejected. want them to tell me, go away. Did something happen to put you in this position? No. I can hear gossip. I get stares. People stare. Nobody ever says anything directly to me. Become aware if you have always been a part of this tribe. No, I haven't. Did you come from outside? Yeah. What happened? How did you join the tribe? I feel like my parents died. So on the count of three, you will travel to the time when the events occurred that brought you to this tribe. One, two, and three. Tell me what happened. There was an attack on our village from another tribe. They were setting the huts on fire and taking the men. They were killing some of the women and taking other women. And the kids were left alone. And how old were you? Maybe ten. And did you have any brothers or sisters? No. What happened to your parents? My mom was killed and my dad was taken and he was later killed. They were taking them for like a human sacrifice to please some god. And how was your mother killed? She was stabbed. She was with my father. She was resisting, and she was stabbed. And did you see all of that, or were you somewhere else? I see it, but I'm a ways away, hiding behind something. Let's move forward to the end of that ordeal. Once they left, tell me what's happening now. It's just the kids there and bodies everywhere. Are you together yeah. with the kids? Yeah. We don't know where to go or what we're going to do. How old are the oldest kids? Teens. Are they in charge? I'm not listening to them. There's other kids following them, but I'm not listening to anybody. Why is that? I don't like taking direction from other people. I don't trust anybody. Do you have a reason not to trust them? Not really. It's just the way I am. So I'm going to count to three. On the count of three, you will travel to the source of this mistrust. You will travel to the time when something happened to make you lose faith in those around you. One, two, and three. Tell me what's happening. My dad came straight to my mind. Just of constant lies and deception. Constantly being lied to. And it's your dad in the current life? Mm hmm So again, as I count to three, you're going to move back in time to the time before that experience in the village that was burned, where your mistrust of authority began to be shaped. One, two, and three. And tell me what comes to mind. My mom and dad are arguing. They're fighting about something. 
Is that in this current life? No. Yes, in the burned village. And how old are you at that point? Maybe seven. You just become aware of what they're fighting about. I think my mom is sticking up for me. Is dad accusing you of something? Yeah. He's saying that I did something that I didn't do. And how does that make you feel? Sad, because I know in my heart that I didn't do it. And he's swearing that I did. He's like screaming it. What is he accusing you of? And what is your mom saying? Calm down. She would never do that. Why do you feel that your mom believes that you would not do it and your father believes that you would? I don't know if she feels like she has to defend me, but she also knows how he is, that he overreacts. Oh, I see. So move forward to the resolution of that event. What happens? He apologizes, but he still doesn't believe me. Why does he apologize? My mom made him for the way he overreacted. But in his mind, he knows I did it. And so what happens after this incident? How does it affect your relationship with him? He doesn't believe that I'm telling him the truth and I feel hurt that he would think that. Does that affect your behavior? Yeah. In what way? I feel hate towards him. I'm always being accused of taking something. So there are multiple instances like that? He's always accusing me of either taking something or anything. Like, I automatically did it. Why do you think he does that? I don't know. Are you his biological child? I believe I am. And so, how does that later transform into not trusting anyone? Because I don't trust my own parents, so how can I trust anybody else? Do you not trust your mother either? I do, but I don't. I feel like she's afraid of him. So she sticks up for me, but she never pays attention to me. So I, I kind of like resent her for not sticking up for me the way that she should. So let's go back to the aftermath of that horrible event when people were killed and houses were burned. And now that you are with other children and you don't trust them to make decisions, what do you decide to do after that? There's a group of people that stay with me, like huddled around me, waiting for me to tell them where we're going to go. They see you as a leader too? Yeah. And what do you decide? We stayed there the first night to get some rest because it had been a long, long night. And then we left. And where do you go? We found that other village. Did you know it was there? No. And how far did you have to go to find it? It was the entire day. And what about the other kids? Did they stay behind? I think they stayed. The ones that didn't go with me. And so when you come to this new village, what happens? How are you met? We all come really dirty, tired, and dehydrated, and they take us in and give us water and set us on the benches by the fire and ask where we came from. Oh, I'm getting a cramp in my foot. As you take the next breath, your body will relax and feel very comfortable as your feet relax from that long journey. 
And as you warm up by the fire, you will feel more and more safe and comfortable and at peace. And just become aware if your leg was affected when you came from that journey. Did you hurt your feet? Yeah, I did. Which foot did you hurt? My left. What happened to it? I feel like something really heavy fell on it. And were you able to heal it? They did at the village. So just experience that weight lifting off of your foot and your foot returning to its normal, healthy condition and state. That trauma leaving your body in all times, past, present, and future. And so tell me about what happened next after you told them your story. They fed us and then showed us where we'll be sleeping. Did you stay inside of other people's huts? No, we had our own hut. And how many of you were there? Five. And were there some kids that were older than you? I was the oldest. Okay. Take me to the next significant event after that day. How did the others integrate or what happened to them? The other kids went with other families. I stayed alone. Why did you choose to stay alone? Because I didn't want to have other parents. I didn't trust them. I felt like I could be on my own. Did anybody offer to take you? Yes. And you told them that you didn't want to be with anybody? Yeah. So now for over 10 years you've been living by yourself? Yes. Do you try to stay away from cylinders? Yes, I stay to myself. I don't talk to anybody. And then when they all do some kind of ritual or some kind of like ceremonies and they're really loud, I leave. I don't feel like I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. Did the people in your own tribe not have ceremonies like this? No. They were quiet. We gather around the fire pits in a circle and they go like around in a circle, but it's not loud. They do some kind of like ceremony with the fire. The other ones do dancing with the things around their ankles and stuff. They're just really loud and I get away from them. If you don't feel that you're one of them or you want to be associated with them, why do you keep staying there? Mm -hmm. I feel like there's nothing else out there. I feel like that's why I go to the wood, like by the boulder, to get away and think about if I were to leave. I think that there's nothing out there. There's nothing around. If there is anything, it's far. So on the count of three, move to the next significant event in that life. One, two, and three. Tell me what's happening. I think I'm married. Tell me about your husband. He's my age. I never noticed him, but he's noticed me. How old are you now? Like 29. Are you still in the same settlement? Yes. Do you like your husband? How do you feel about him? Yes, I like him. So how did this marriage come to be if you stayed away from all the people? He approached me. When he approached you, what was your reaction? I didn't know why he was talking to me. I thought he was not being serious. I'm thinking, like, why would he be talking to me? And what does he do to change your mind? Just, he approaches me every day. He's just really nice. He's really kind and, like, asks to eat with me. And where do you two eat? In my hut. 
Does he ever invite you to come out and eat with the breast? Yeah, I go with him sometimes. And I took him to where the boulder is and the waterfall. And he never knew about it. Do you trust him? I'm starting to. How did you decide to stay together? He always does what he says. He's like a gentleman, and I think it's sweet. I start to trust him. And how long do you spend getting to know each other? It took a good while. Does he ask you to marry him? Yes. And do you have any doubt, or do you know that that's what you want to do? Yeah, I had doubt at first, but then it took a while, but I agreed. Where are you staying now? I think he built a new hut. In a it's way. bigger. Is there anything inside of it? There's a bigger bed, and there's a table that he made by hand, and two benches. There's a lot of pottery, and there's gifts that he brought home. He brings me gifts. Like what? He knows that I like turquoise. There's a necklace. There's just a bunch of gifts on the table. Where does he get the necklace? He made it. Where does he get turquoise? And there's a cave or something nearby that has turquoise. And how do you feel about being with him? Happy, like normal. And has your standing in the village changed? Yeah, it's like everyone's nice to me now. How do you treat them? The same way they treat me. Okay, good. So on the count of three, I'd like you to move to the last day in that lifetime. One, two, and three. Tell me what's happening. I think I'm sick. Where are you? I'm in another hut, like a witch doctor's hut. And what are you doing there? He's trying to cure me. What's wrong? He's like waving leaves over my body. I don't know what's wrong with me. I black out and I'm like sweating, but I don't know what's wrong with me. How did you get to his hut? My husband brought me. About what age are you? Sixties. As this witch doctor is working on you, is anything changing? No. And so just go to the last moment of your life and allow your soul to exit the body gently and easily. And as you begin to lift higher and higher, what are some thoughts or feelings that come to you? That I have a really big problem with trust, trusting people. I always think that someone's talking about me or has a bad thought about me when they don't. I just don't trust. So just allow that life to begin to fade away as your soul rises higher and higher and begins to remember its true identity. And so as you look back at that entire life experience, I'd like you to tell me from a soul perspective what the purpose of that life was. Learn to trust or to not trust. Like knowing who to trust and knowing who you can't. To not trust only those that actually did something and not punish everybody. Mm -hmm. 
And in that place where you feel comfort and peace, there is usually a review of life, where you review whether what you intended to experience went well, what things you succeeded with, what things you need to experience some more. You will begin to gain a greater perspective on that particular life experience. You will also begin to gain a perspective on the significant relationships in your life because all of them contributed to your overall learning. So as all of that awareness flows into your mind, tell me what you understand now. Not everybody's the same. It's okay to let your guard down with some people. Were you able to do that in that life? Yes. Do you feel that that experience was successful in terms of your learning? Yes. Good. Now become aware of your father in that life. You're going to see him now at a soul level. And you're going to understand now why he came into your life, what his role was in your life, and also whether you have had other human incarnations with him. He's supposed to teach me that not everyone tells the truth, but they believe it's true. Everyone has their own subjective reality that yes. they experience. Yes. And that what I might not see is true, he does. So in his world it was real and in your mm -hmm. world it wasn't real? Yes. Okay. What was the significance of that lesson for you? To be understanding, to try to understand his way of thinking or how he sees it. As you look around, you may find a beautiful light approaching you and that it is the soul of your father in that life. Do you see him? Yes. And as you come together, how do you greet each other? With a hug. Are you glad to see each other? Yeah. Do you see him differently from the way he was on Earth? Yeah. And do you understand now that he was there playing a role to help you with the, your lesson? Yes. Become aware if he is part of your soul family. Yes. Is he in your current life as Savannah? Yes. And who is he in this life? He's my father. And as you become aware of that at a soul level, I want you to have a communication with him so he can help you understand what role he's playing in this life for you. I think I still hadn't learned how to see other point of views. And from the soul perspective, what is your role in his life? What are you helping him experience? The same. So you are traveling together to learn the same lesson? Yeah. As you are remembering this at that soul level, experience healing, which comes from realizing that you are helping each other learn a lesson instead of just hurting each other. Is this helping you experience some healing and peace? Yes. And are you able to feel the love that you feel for each other at a soul level? Because you have to have this beautiful, unconditional love to travel together 
and to help each other with learning. It's almost like being two school friends that travel together and do homework together. Yeah. Good. Now when this experience feels complete, you can allow him to take a step back. And then what I'd like you to become aware of is the husband that you had in that life. His soul comes forward and he greets you. And as you reunite, there is a greater understanding of the role he played in that life for you. And what is it that you realize? He was supposed to teach me how to trust people, how to let my guard down and realize that not everybody's bad. Is his soul part of your soul family? I don't think so, no. Okay. Has he had other life experiences with you? No. So I want you to thank him for helping you learn that some people are worthy of trust. See if he has any message for you at this time. I think you'll be all right. Okay. And just allow him to step back and fade away. I want all of the consciousness and personality of Savannah to once again return and fully integrate back into the body. I would like to ask the higher consciousness of Savannah to come forward so I can speak to it and ask questions. May I speak to you? Yes. Thank you. So I know that you could have brought forth many different lifetimes for Savannah to examine today. But you chose to bring forward the life of a native woman. And I'd like you to tell me why you selected that particular lifetime for her to see. Just speak the words as they come to you. She's fighting me. I know. She can step aside and have a moment of trust the way that her husband showed her. That's her problem. She doesn't trust not even herself. Right. And I wonder if she can allow us 10 minutes of conversation where she suspends this mistrust and disbelief. And then 10 minutes from now, she will pick it up again and put it back where she usually carries it, if she chooses at that point. Would that be okay with Savannah? Yes. Yeah. So as the higher consciousness steps forward, let me ask you again, why was this life significant for her to examine? It was important for her to see that her father is the way he is because he's only teaching her a lesson that she put in place. So ultimately, she is still in control at some level. She made the choices and she put this in place. Yes. Can you help her release the pain associated with some events in her childhood that kind of reinforced her mistrust? Yes. Can you allow her to vent that pain, that mistrust, through the opening in her heart as she feels that center of her chest opening up like a vent, that lower vibration energy begins to vent out and replace it with light and begins to heal her wounds of the heart. Yes. And there might be a sense of lightness as that weight is lifting off of her shoulders. Yes. Beautiful, thank you. So Savannah wants to understand her life path. She has some really beautiful ideas about what she wants to do, but she wanted to ask if those are the right steps. She wants to create 
hygiene stations for the homeless. And she's wondering if it's too much for her to take on. What message do you have for her about that? You got it. You can absolutely do it. Is it something that she should collaborate with others on? She works best with those she's closest to. She has a friend that shares the same ideas that she would work good with. Thank you. Now she's also getting a real estate license and she has a notary certification. Are those things a good match for her? Absolutely. Wonderful. Is there anything else that she should focus on that she is not aware of? No, she's on the right track. She knows what she needs to do. Okay. So she's been dealing with difficulty retaining information. Can you help her understand why that is? She has a lesion on her brain. How did she get it? Is the lesion something that can be healed? No. Was it meant to be there? Yes. Was it meant to make it difficult for her to retain information? Yes. And why was it significant for her to experience this challenge? So I'm going to touch the forehead in a moment. When I touch it, there is going to be a burst of concentration that comes into her mind. It will allow you to focus and send information through now. And as that focus comes in, there's also going to be a flow of healing energy that is going to flood the brain and allow whatever is preventing her from retaining information to experience an improvement, if not full healing. So what I'd like you to do now is a body scan. Start at the top of her head and scan the entire body all the way to the bottom of her feet. And as you go through the body, if there's anything that's out of balance or that needs attention, please speak about it. She has a small blood clot on her shoulder. She knows about that. Can you clear That's... it right now? Yes. Okay, go ahead and clear that. Let me know when it's done. And while it's clearing, continue the scan. It's done. Good, thank you. Go ahead. She has herniations in her cervical spine and significant nerve damage in her thoracic spine, her T5 area. So I'd like you to do an adjustment that will alleviate the herniated discs and also begin to build back the protection for the nerves so that they are not exposed and they are not damaged anymore if she is willing to trust and allow for that to happen. Is Savannah willing? Yes. So hi yourself, talk to me about the progress that's being made. The healing nerve damage is progressing. The discs were pinching on her nerve. Is there anybody else assisting with this? Yes. So whatever the team is that's working on this, will it continue the healing process until it's completely done? Yes. Okay, thank you. I'm sure she'll really appreciate it. So continue with the body scan. What else needs her attention? Her kidneys. She doesn't drink enough water. She's developing kidney stones. And can you clear that right now? Yes. Okay. While you're doing that, 
Let's put into Savannah a strong desire for a clean, clear water so that every time she thinks about her body and about her health, it will be a strong desire to reach for a glass of cold, refreshing water because her body will remind her that she needs to put more water into her body. And every time she drinks it, there will be such a feeling of satisfaction from drinking that clean, clear, refreshing water that she will want to drink more until she takes just the right amount to flush out the kidneys and to keep herself healthy. This desire to drink more water will grow until it becomes just a normal part of the routine and she drinks just the right amount of water for her body. How are the kidneys doing now? There you go. The stones are gone. Okay, good. So keep going with the scan. That is all. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Now, I want to give you a chance to give Savannah one last message before we let you go. So is there anything that you want to say to her directly? Yes. Go ahead. Learn to love yourself more and know that you are enough. Not everyone is your enemy. You are doing great. Thank you. So now I'm going to ask the high consciousness to recede to where it belongs with much love and thanks for the help and information that it has given Savannah today. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the session. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you click on the bell, you will be notified of any of my future postings. Thank you. Bye.